everyone and welcome to worship today it's nice and as always great to see each and every one of you <coughs> choir alike especially because I know good music is coming and hello to those of you who are watching live right now or who might be watching us later in the week we're happy that you are joining us with worship today uh, just some upcoming um, things for this week and this month. We've got some meetings continuing to going on, so just always double check those dates and times if you were on a committee. <coughs> Youth group today, uh, 5.30, meeting at La Costa? No, meeting no. here. Meeting here, all right, meeting here. Uh, the Bible study is ongoing using this freedom book and some good videos as well so drop in um, the time it says 8 30 kind of gets going more about 8 45 so um, drop in any Sunday and it's always a good conversation <coughs> uh, we're finishing up our trivia and treasures today so if you've got any last minute uh, tickets to buy or to put in the jars do that real quick and then we're going to start while you're um, enjoying your coffee fellowship. We'll start drawing tickets for the baskets and for the door prize uh, to see how many of you were able to answer some of those trivia questions correctly. Um, upcoming in October, October 1st, uh, Pastor Sung comes back. And then the following Sunday, she'll be going into Stockton and preaching at her husband's church. And he will be joining us here. We also have a guest preacher the end of October 30th uh, from part of our reconciling um, group who will be here, um, uh, Reverend Alice Swanson. Upper room for September, October is available. I know there's some in the church office, so if anybody wants one today and wants to grab one out of the office or ask me about grabbing one, feel free. Do we have any other announcements for today? Olivia. Um, as you can see, Alexander's with me this morning, so my announcement is more maybe of an ask. Of, uh, I appreciate your grace and patience as uh, she joins a uh, choir in the congregation this morning while mommy conducts. <laughs> so feel free to just ignore the wandering child, possibly. <laughs> just smile at her and wave. <laughs> Heidi. Just another reminder that we're still taking wings or out in the narthex and bias. Thanking her for her service, welcoming her back, and put it on the tree. We're going to present her with uh, a tree of blessings on her conference. 
And we're writing on the white side. Is that it's correct? Does it matter? Okay. Do whatever you want to do. It might be easier to write on the white side. Also, October 9th is Pastor Appreciation Week. Yeah. And, um, and she won't be here. <laughs> Any other announcements? Yes, Linda. I'd just like to remind everybody that next Sunday, the second, is uh, World Communion Sunday. And that's the Sunday the pastor wanted us to try and um, do traditional things. We'd like people in the congregation to bring a traditional food or bread, whatever, uh, to fellowship foods that you were brought up eating. Like, I was from Illinois, and we had a lot of corn, so I'm eating cornbread. <laughs> and we'll have them all out on tables, but anything different that you were brought up eating. And we'd like everybody to participate. It's a good way to get to know everybody else and to show the pastor we haven't forgotten her while she was gone. We're still doing this. So hopefully Very we'll see good. You next Sunday, too. Let us be in an attitude of worship. join me and rise as you are able and join me in the call to worship. Come all who live in the shelter of the Most High, gather together all who trust in God Almighty. God reigns through all generations. We will praise God as long as we live. We trust in God, our refuge and our fortress. We can count on God's faithfulness at all times. God lifts us up when we are threatened or afraid. We call to God for protection and rescue. Worship God who richly provides us with all things. Give thanks to the one who dwells in unapproachable light. God who made heaven and earth, he's faith forever. We will pour out Our opening hymn is Ferris Lord Jesus, United Methodist Hymnal, number 189.
the young disciples who would like to come forward here. Come on up. So I have a question for the children and today's theme is happiness. Do you know about happiness? Yeah? So the question that I have for you all is what makes you happy? Got a thought about that? Drawing. 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 Drawing is a good thing. That makes you happy. What else makes you happy? When you get to do what? Okay. Playing games. Playing games. Yeah, playing games is something that makes you happy. Do you know what makes you happy? I want to give you some suggestions. Do you have a special food that you like and when you eat it, it makes you happy? Yes. What sort of food would that be? Pizza and Mountain Mike's. Uh, pizza, Mike, Mountain Mike's pizza is really good. <laughs> yeah, that would make you happy. So what kind of food would make you happy? Candy. Candy. Yeah, candy. And Halloween is coming too. And what about you? Sugar. Sugar. Yes. <laughs> Great. Okay. And when you're with certain people, which people and you're with them and that makes you happy? My mom. With your mom, yeah? yeah. With your dad? With your dad too, yeah. Being with particular people can make you happy. And uh, what, um, uh, what games or what competitions or something like that, do you ever do that and that makes you happy? Playing Minecraft. Playing Minecraft, yes. I never understood that one. <laughs> and playing football. You do a front flip, that would make you happy. Yeah. Wow, particularly if you don't fall over. <laughs> yeah. So what makes, what do you think makes her happy? Climbing. Climbing. Climbing and strawberries. And strawberries. Yes, yeah, strawberries. Is, and Elmo. And Elmo. Yes. Elmo is good. Okay. So I want to suggest a couple of other things. When you learn new things, that sometimes can make you happy and you think, wow, I didn't know that, now I know that. Mm -hmm. So learning new things can make you happy. Uh, spending time with friends. And uh, so these are all things that make you happy. And I want to tell you of a place where there is happiness and all of these things are there waiting and that's in heaven. And heaven is when you get to be very, very happy and above all, you get to be happy because God is there and God loves you. So that's a real reason why you'd be happy. Now you're going to go off and do Sunday school, but not before you say the Lord's Prayer with me. And this week, you're going to have to hold my hand. Okay? <laughs> it didn't do it last week. Okay. So... Do you want to stand and say with me the Lord's Prayer? Okay, I'm going to come down here. Okay. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for her. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.
you could all see Livia conducting with her hands. She also had some foot action going on up here. <laughs> that was uh, very, appro very, uh, very fun to watch. As we come to our time of tithes and offerings, I invite you to be in prayer with me. God of justice and mercy, we come to worship you this day as ones who, on the great balance scale of your creation, or more, are more like the rich man in the gospel story than we are Lazarus. The parable Jesus tells reminds us that the chasm between rich and poor is hard to cross in the life to come, but not so for us this day, as we strive to see God's kingdom at work in our world. As we offer gifts today, may we do so, striving to be those blessed to be a blessing. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. It is always, uh, an, I think, an important part of being a church family is that we are able to have this time to share with one another the joys that we have and the concerns that we have, and knowing that we are not alone in either one, that we have um, a church family who is enjoying alongside of us and praying alongside of us. Do we have any joys and concerns um, to share this morning? Cece. Good morning. We have a new grandson, Charles Ray Kirshner. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> Olivia. Um, it's a joy to be here and to bring my daughter to service today, and so I just want to um, enjoy to be here in this community and uh, a family um, that is understanding and patient. So um, thank you for being so accepting. <laughs> and that's one of the joys of a church family is getting to watch the little ones grow up. It's, it's marvelous. What's, what's your daughter's name? This is Alexandra. Alexandra, yeah. Eileen. This is from Judy Beeger. Her friend Betty is in the hospital and she asked for prayers for her. Thank you. And Heidi. I have been asking for prayers for my daughter, Kate, who had surgery recently. And I am thrilled to say that the mass that was removed um, is benign. <laughs> and <laughs> she is healing. She, is, she did now get hit with a, a nasty stomach bug, but she is recovering. So just, just prayers. That, thank you, God. And Dave. Thanks for all the prayers you offered for my sister. Uh, she's my big sister of 77, and she had uh, two of doctor's appointments this week in the Seattle area, one with her orthopedic surgeon and one with another referral. And all the doctors in America agree that they don't want to do surgery now. They want to just maintain her stabilized shoulder and monitor it for a few weeks before they make that decision. And so thank you for your prayers, and she's doing well. Thank you. And her name is? Uh, it's Patricia, but we call her Pat. Pat. <laughs> Janet. Oh, sheesh. <laughs> I just want to ask for prayers for my nephew, Tyler. He's going through some uh, tough times right now. And um, thank you. 
I'm just going to ask for travel mercies for um, a couple of our teachers here who are going on fall break soon and are traveling um, likely off the continent potentially. So uh, travel mercies for Kevin and Cheryl um, starting this uh, a week from probably yesterday. Their fall break starts. <laughs> Where are you going, Kevin? No idea. It's a surprise. Bob? I'd like to ask for prayers of healing and mercy um, for my uncle Victor Di Pianta. He uh, was in a horrible accident. Oh, no. um, they were working on the, the brakes of his grandson's car and somehow his grandson, uh, it went into gear while he was in front of it and it rammed him into the back of the garage, shattered one leg and uh, basically pulverized the other one and um, he was in ICU for quite a while I mean, this happened like three weeks ago I should have asked for prayers a while a while ago um, but he was in ICU for a while and he and then he was in rehab and he got an infection and they had to skin his thigh I don't know what kind of infection it was but it sounds pretty horrible but anyway prayers for healing mostly and mercy thank you Dennis was there anyone on zoom I sort of went over them all right Reverend Stevenson I will leave it to you let us pray uh-oh I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world for the leaders of our congregation and for the wider Methodist Church. We pray for this gathering here this morning, for those at home and those who are here. We give thanks for the music makers and the worship leaders and for all who contribute to the worship that we share. We thank you for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace throughout the world, for peace with justice, for the leaders of the nations, for the people of Ukraine, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and for peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, for those in prison, and for all those who seek healing this day. Pray for those in any need or trouble. And here especially, we remember Frank and Kate, for Pat, Tyler, and for Uncle Victor. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him, Pray that we may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, and especially for two people, for my brother-in-law Dewey and our good friend Linda. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers and thanksgivings for our pastor, Pastor Lee, returning from her sabbatical next week. We pray that she may return refreshed and ready for action. I ask your thanksgivings for our homes and our families, for the 52nd anniversary of my ordination, for the birth of Charles Ray, and for the lively presence of Alexandra here among us. Praise God for those in every generation who have set us a good example and have revealed Jesus to us. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will pass the peace now. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. I invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of our gospel, which comes from the book of Luke, chapter 19. This is the rich man and Lazarus. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tongue of his, tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. For he said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers that he might warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will be they convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. This is the word of the Lord for us this day. Thanks be to God. Amen. May the words that I speak and the words which you hear be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, last week, uh, Okay. 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 You're not to watch these. They come later. Okay. So last week I mentioned some movies which I suspect a number of you hadn't seen, and this week I want to mention another movie, and I wonder if you have seen on TV uh, Monty Python's Flying Circus. Uh, Monty yeah. Python is the theme for today, right? Yes. Oh, good. So some have seen it. It's, for those who don't know, it's a comedy series, or it was a comedy series, in the 1970s. And as well as uh, having a series on TV, uh, the Monty Python group, as you see them here, were also uh, involved in making a number of movies, and one of those movies is The Life of Brian. And it was irreverent, even blasphemous, and it was banned in certain towns in England, and also in Norway, Ireland, and Italy. People thought that it was a bad thing for people to watch. It was controversial. And the reason I mention it is because in the movie there is a particular song. 
And the song is performed by Eric Idle. And the song is Always Look on the Bright Side of Life. And that is my text for you this morning. Always look on the bright side of life. And surprise, surprise, it became uh, immensely popular, certainly in Britain, and it went to number three in the 1991 UK Singles Chant. It was a satirical song and appealed to the British sense of humor where left is right and up is down and everything is back to front. Uh, and uh, you should always pretend to be upbeat even in the worst of times. Uh, thus, during the Falkland Islands War in 1982, a British destroyer, the Sheffield, uh, received an attack from the Argentinians and was hit by a missile which damaged the boat so much that they had to abandon ship. And uh, as the crew was preparing to abandon ship, what did they do? <laughs> but they all sang, look on the bright side of life. <laughs> you have to have a sense of irony to enjoy Monty Python. And you need to have a sense of irony to make sense of the parables of Jesus. And none more so than the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, which we heard this morning. It's a parable of reversal, what we call a chiasmus. A chiasmus comes from the Greek, and it means that it's shaped like the letter X, or chi, and it's a literary device, and it's usually made up of two lines, and the first line is the, se the second line is the first line, but in uh, reverse. And thus you get the Sabbath was made for man, not man, for the Sabbath. So that's an example of chiasmus. In the parable of Jesus, which we heard this morning, the rich guy has a comfortable home where he entertains his friends and he wears expensive clothes. There's plenty to eat and to drink and he has, offers lavish hospitality to the people that he likes, but not to poor Lazarus, who has to crouch down at his gate, hoping to eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. He's covered with sores because he doesn't get good medical attention. He's not a member of Kaiser, and he doesn't have any water to wash in and he doesn't have the energy to ward off the rabid street dogs that are running wild around him, and they even come and lick him. It's a dreadful situation, and here it is, poor old Lazarus at the gate, covered in sores, while the rich man is sitting around, just having a wonderful uh, party, eating, is it pancakes or whatever he's got there. So this is how the chiasmus looks for the rich man and Lazarus. In this life, the rich man has a lavish lifestyle, plenty to eat and to drink, and really nice clothes. And in this life, Lazarus at his gate is destitute, and he goes hungry, and he's miserable. But in the next life, uh, Lazarus, is comfortable, situated, situated in Abraham's bosom, while uh, the rich man is in Hades, which is hotter than Hades, and we know about hot, 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 because we've had it for ourselves. The fate of the rich man and the fate of Lazarus are reversed in the next life. And unlike fairy tales, it does not end happily ever after. The rich man who has lived it up in this life is roasting in hell in the next. But that's only part one of the story. 
and Luke also includes part two, the dialogue between the rich man, now in torment in Hades, and Abraham in heaven, where he cradles Lazarus in his arms. The rich man asks Abraham for a drink to quench his thirst, but Abraham replies, you should have thought about this when you were living the good life. And he adds, in any case, you can't get there from here. In the words of the story, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so and no one can cross from there to us. And this always reminds me of the London Underground. <laughs> because they made a big mistake when they constructed the <coughs> London Underground. The platforms are curved so that if the, the middle of each carriage is, what, two feet from the edge, and uh, you have to get on really safely at the end of the carriage, which is the part that is nearest the platform. You need to watch where you put your step, because there is a great gulf fixed, and you need to mine the gap. So uh, the rich man, if not for himself, pleads for his five brothers. He wants Lazarus to warn them. But what to do what? What do they need to do to avoid the place of torment in their own lives? They need to give up living a selfish, egotistical, pleasure-seeking lifestyle and to take some thought for the poor the starving, the homeless. All they need to do, says Luke, is read their Bibles, and then the gates of heaven will be open for them. We read the parables of Jesus about God's kingdom and how to enter through the pearly gates. It's all back to front and upside down and the wrong way up. And that's what the kingdom of God is like. It's not consistent with our idea of logic. And there are always surprises in the parables of Jesus, which if we look carefully enough, will surprise us. They're, un predict they're unpredictable and they're unexpected. If it was all obvious, why would Jesus bother to tell us these parables? So it's all upside down. And there are a lot of upside-down stuff in Luke's Gospel. Right at the beginning of the Gospel, Mary sings in her Magnificat, The Lord has put down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the humble and meek. In a few weeks, we'll hear the parable of the publican and the Pharisee in the temple. It's all back to front and upside down. The, the bad publican will be heard and will go home satisfied, but the Pharisee, who has done all the right things and has uh, given tithes and so on and so forth, I'm not preaching that Sunday, so I thought I'd tell it to you now. <laughs> the the uh, Pharisee, who's done it all, does not go home satisfied. Jesus told the story about the mustard seed, which supposedly is the smallest of all the seeds, but eventually grows up to be so big that the birds of the air nest in its branches. I have to say that I have never seen a mustard seed plant that was big enough to take uh, birds, uh, have their nests in its branches, but then this is a parable of Jesus and it's there to surprise you. Uh, Jesus begins his ministry, according to Luke, by uh, telling a sermon in the synagogue in Nazareth. And Jesus reminds this conservative Jewish congregation that the great prophet Elijah cared not for his own people, but for a Gentile, an outcast, 
and a widow rather than the good Jewish widows. And then there's the story of the great banquet. The great and the good refused the uh, invitation to go to the banquet because they had better things to do than accept the invitation. One of them had bought a new car and needed to try it out and another got married and of course marriage takes preference over everything else and so on. And all of them refused this uh, invitation that was so powerful and so uh, winning, uh, but they didn't accept it. And then there are the Beatitudes that you will remember. The Beatitudes in uh, uh, Luke's version, the hungry now will be filled, and those who are full now will go home hungry. It's all back to front. And we could add Monty Python to this list. Those, uh, it's even in the worst of times, when life is treating you badly, when everything is going wrong, when your ship is sinking, then always look on the bright side of life. Uh, few, if any of us, are going to enjoy the life of ostentatious luxury like the rich man. We do not dine on caviar every day and our clothes do not come, as far as I can see, from Christian Dior. We do not hang out with the rich and famous. They are in Hollywood and we are in Brentwood. And at the same time, most of us do not suffer with Lazarus, homeless, eating the scraps that fall from the master's table. This morning, as I was reading my devotional book, I came across this quotation and I thought it would fit very well at this point. It's by a guy called Paul Philibert. Never heard of him before, but he's good, obviously. The point of the parable is that beauty is more desirable than financial profit. Friendship more precious than advantage and solidarity in a common vision more compelling than self-sufficiency. Many of us do experience pain and distress in this life and we look for a, rehearse, a reversal in the life to come. We live with the hope that when our lives are ended, the pearly gates are going to open for us and we will see the light of the heavenly city beyond, where God will wipe away every tear from our eyes and where death will be no more, nor mourning, nor crying and pain. And, we will, and he will make all things new and we will live in the presence of God. Amen. Okay. <laughs> so, wonderful thanks to the Reverend Hugh Stevenson for being with us these last two weeks and for his marvelous messages on the parables. And as we prepare to sing our last hymn, he has picked over the last couple of weeks just marvelous hymns for us to sing as well. Before we sing the hymn, I just want to thank Dennis. Uh, who has uh, put the slides in back to front to yeah. make the point. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> the life of Brian, yes, all things are reversed. Yes. <laughs> so if you'll stand and join me with our closing hymn on Eagle's Wing.
the blessing. Go out into God's mission field with the true gospel of Christ Jesus. May we walk with the Spirit and go beyond individual righteousness. May God grow us with the fruit of the Spirit that we may bring communal righteousness to our world. And may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always and everywhere. Amen. Amen.